Hey folks, David Stewart here. It's time for some more music theory. This video is going to be a supplementary video, and the point of this video is to hopefully fill in um, any gaps in knowledge that might exist for people um, who are not familiar with reading this five-line staff, which is common for Western music since the 17th century and really even before. Uh, this would be appropriate for students who are maybe uh, guitarists who never learned to read standard staff notation at all, um, who purely learned to read tablature or existed in the popular music styles where they got to just play chords or things like that. Um, vocalists or choir members who were never taught to read staff notation properly or who maybe came out of a program where reading music um, was never specified. Drummers, of course, who are used to, to operating their instrument, but maybe are not used to reading what other instrumentalists have to read in order to understand music, or just anybody who didn't know all the different sta uh, staves and how to read on them. So if you're just a clarinetist and you've never read bass clef before, uh, this video will provide some information for you. So if you uh, watch my previous video on the history and origins of notation, um, eventually we evolved to this five line staff system. Um, from nooms into a really much more codified system that tells us the pitch that we're playing, the note that we're playing, how long to play it for, and we'll actually also give lots of other directions as well once you get a little deeper into score reading. We're gonna talk about the basic stuff. Um, first of all, terminology. When you have um, these, fi these five lines here, the five lines by themselves, that's called a staff. And I'm gonna write that in blue for you guys. Staff, okay? The staff is what we, what we use to read music. Um, and uh, what we put at the beginning of the staff is this thing right here, which is called a, a clef. Clef as in uh, C-L-E-F, not cleft as in like cleft chin or cleft palate or something like that. So clef. And the clef tells you the arrangement of notes on the lines and spaces of the staff. Where the note is placed on the staff, high or low, tells you what note to play on your instrument. Uh, by the way, the purpose of this video is not to teach you how to read music on your specific instrument, but how to read it on, in general terms, for all instruments, okay? Uh, the beginning of this one, this is actually called the treble clef. And treble clef is used for um, any kind of high-pitched instrument. So a flute reads in treble clef, a violin reads in treble clef, soprano vocalists read in treble clef. And it's also used for instruments that are transposing and still read in treble clef due to historical concerns. So bass clarinet technically reads in treble clef though the pitches sound down here in the bass clef staff. Um, and uh, guitar reads in treble clef, but they read an octave. Basically the notes look like they're an octave higher than when they sound. So the real low note on a, on a, on a guitar is down below the staff and uh, it's written in the treble clef staff. So there's a lot of stuff that you gotta know with transposition. You don't have to know that right now. We'll get to that eventually. Uh, the treble clef staff um, notates all the notes basically in the higher register of the piano. So if you're sitting at a piano, all the notes on the right-hand side, they're all on treble clef. All the notes on the left-hand side, they're all on bass clef. And what we get on the piano is this note right in the middle there, that's called middle C. Uh, just so you guys know, middle C. We call it middle C because it's in the middle of the keyboard, in the middle of the two staves, uh, and fits nice, nice, and, uh, nice and tight in the middle there. Uh, we also get um, over here, that's a bass clef. There's other clefs that you may need to know, uh, but for now, most of what I'm going to do in this series is going to be in treble clef or bass clef. Other clefs you might need to know is alto clef, um, which is the clef that viola reads in. Um, older styles of music use different kinds of clefs differently. Um, we call this commonly the G clef because the treble clef kind of swirls around and lands on this G line. And we call this the F clef because this kind of swirls around the F line on the bass clef staff. Um, these are, by the way, notations of relative pitch, not necessarily absolute pitch, because it depends what you want to tune your pitches to. Um, if you're tuning to A440, which is pretty standard for most instruments today, then we're talking about a pretty absolute notation of pitch. But if you happen to tune your instrument off of that, then uh, you're gonna have a different frequency come out than a same instrument with a different tuning uh, reading the same note. So it's pretty close to the right pitch. Um, this is not notating when we put a, a C here. This doesn't notate any C on the piano, any pitch class C. It notates a very specific C. That's what I'm getting at. Um, let's start with the treble clef. The stuff that you need to know on the treble clef staff is um, the lines are E, G, B, D, F. So if you have a note on, say, the top line there, it would be an F, and it'd be the F two octaves above the middle C. Um, and if you had a note on the on the line here, the B in that note might look like you know look like that. Um, 
that would be the note B, uh, an octave and one note above middle C. In the spaces, what we get is uh, F-A-C-E or face. Okay, and I'll just extend that staff out a little bit to show that. This is the way most people remember it, and they remember the E-G-B-D-F as, you guys ready for this? Every good boy does fine. I'm sure you remember this one. Every good boy does fine. Okay, every good boy does fine. I've also heard every good boy deserves fudge. I find that one a little bit creepy. It's kind of like, um, every good boy deserves fudge. It just sounds a little creepy. So I do every good boy does fine. The other way you can remember it is if you know where A is, right here, A, from there you can just do the ABCs, right? A, the next line up is B, next space is C, D, E, F. Uh, we use A through G. When we get to G, we start over again at A. So wherever you're at, if you're going down, you're going backwards in the alphabet. And if you're going up, you're going up in the alphabet. You're going forwards in the alphabet. Uh, and if you know that, then when we start doing ledger lines, it's going to get a lot easier. And I'll explain what ledger lines are in just a moment. Let's take a look at the bass clef staff. Bass clef staff is this entire arrangement shifted down one line or down one line in one space, however you want to look at it. So instead of the G being here, the G is down on the bottom line. There's G. G, B, D, F, A. And we tend to remember that one as good boys do fine always. All right. Good boys do fine always. That's the way people tend to remember this one. And in the space here, it's this whole thing shifted down. We have A, C, E, and then we have G, which tends to be all cows eat grass. <laughs> all cows eat grass. That's an easy way to remember that one. And of course, face just spells face. So this is the way most students end up learning this. But like I said, if you know where the A is, you can see that you just go through the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Oh, when you get to G, you start over again at A. Sometimes we run out of space on a staff, and so we draw some extra lines to get to a higher note. And we'll draw a note up there. And uh, that note <laughs> will indicate a note above, however many octaves above, uh, above the treble clef staff. And in order to figure out what that note is, you basically have to go from here. F is on the line. You have a G. A, B, C, D, E. Okay, that would be E. So if, as long as you can do your A, B, C's and start over again, what you get to G, start over again at A, then you can read the ledger lines above and below. Same idea. You can have ledger lines that go way below the staff and ledger lines that go way above, way above the staff. Um, so where the note is placed on the staff tells you what note to play. How the note looks tells you what rhythm to play in a piece of music, okay? So one of the things that is not included on here right now that I'm going to draw right now is you usually get this little thing right here at the beginning called a time signature. It looks like that. It looks like a couple of four fours right there. Draw that up and uh, maybe I'll put this in red for you, for y'all. Um, call that a time signature. And what a time signature tells you is it tells you the grouping of rhythms. Um, so the, the top number tells you the larger group, the, what's called the measure group, four beats in a measure. The bottom number, number tells you what graphic you're going to assign the beat to. That sort of division of time into regular intervals, that pulse, tells you what graphic you're going to assign it to. Um, so the four represents the quarter note. And um, I'll just go ahead and draw some of those rhythms for you. Um, let's see if we can look over here a little bit. And maybe we can take a look at these. At the top of our rhythm tree is um, a big old empty egg that looks just like this. Bop. Call that a whole note. Okay. And a whole note um, in 4-4 four, four time would actually be four beats. So for now we're just going to call it four beats. Because in this time, we're assigning what's called the quarter note to beat, and it'll become obvious what that looks like in a second here. A whole note divides up into two half notes, which is pretty easy to figure out right there. The half of a whole is a half. We call that a half note. And you draw a half note by taking a whole note, that empty circle, and just drawing what's called a stem onto the edge of it. Okay? 
Um, next, we have a division of a, of, a, of a half note into two quarter notes each. And so the way we draw a quarter note is we draw a half note, but instead of having it empty, we fill it in so it's black. Just like that, okay? So it's got a dark black circle and it's got a stem. And if we were to draw a quarter note on the staff over here, um, if we go back over here and draw a quarter note on the staff, we would draw, if it wants to be on the line, we draw the line going straight through the middle of that, what's called the note head, the round part, and we draw a stem that's attached to it. And uh, that lets us know that that is a one beat note. So if I put that over here, quarter note, quarter, one beat. This would be two beats in 4-4. Four, four. This is all in 4-4 four, four time. Now, the thing is you could take this same, same thing and reassign any graphic to be whatever rhythm you wanted it to be. So one of the things about our time signature is that we could change the numbers to indicate which one of these notes is actually going to be a one beat note. Um, you can have what's called 2-2 two, two time, which looks like this, just 2 over 2, we call cut time, and that would indicate that the half note is going to have the beat. So the beat, the reg that regular pulse, would be this. This would be half of a beat, and this would be just two beats. So you can reassign these however you want. There's also time signatures that use the eighth note. Uh, an eighth note looks like this. You take that quarter note, and you just continue to divide the quarter note. And you can do this infinitely, and it will become pretty obvious how you can do this infinitely. Um, and we take two quarter notes, and we beam them together. So you can do this by drawing two quarter notes and then drawing a little beam. And by the way, when they actually appear on the staff, they don't really get smaller sort of the way that I'm drawing them. Uh, I'm an imperfect human, I'm not a perfect robot. So that's an eighth note. And that's a half a beat. And what we really do is we really assign these, you know, two per beat. And we would count it like um, a one. Here's our four beats, beat one, two, three, and four are the first of each pair. And then we tend to use the a plus, or what I call the, the syllable and. We can it one and two and three and four and. We can continue dividing those eighth notes up, by the way. Uh, so each eighth note can divide up again, and you can do this infinitely, like I said. And uh, when we divide those eighth notes up, and I'm just gonna draw four of these for the sake of time. You add a second beam, that becomes a sixteenth. Sixteenth. And that's, of course, a quarter of a beat. And we tend to count that one, one e and a. One e and, oh, put a plus, one e and a. Um, that's, a that's the counting system that I sort of grew up on. Uh, different people use different counting systems. Some people do like one tattoo or something like that. Um, I don't do that. I do one e and a, and that's, that's the way I like it. So that's the way I do it. And that's the way I'll probably be, probably be using it in my lessons and in this particular video series. So this is most of the information that you need to actually decode written music, recode staff, uh, decode staff music. Where the note is placed on the staff tells you what name, uh, what note it is. Not just what name of the note it is, but where it is on your instrument. Uh, there's multiple D's, right? We can see two E's right here. They're in two different spots on the keyboard um, or on your guitar, whatever instrument you're reading on. We have how many G's? One, two, three, four G's. And they're all in different spots on the keyboard. So just because you see a G doesn't mean any G works. It's a very specific G that they're asking for when you read the music. And how the note looks tells you how long you're going to play it for. It tells you the rhythm and how to read that rhythm. With your time signature, which is your guide for how the notes are grouped together into measures, every four beats you would actually get a, a vertical line through the staff to indicate that you have completed one measure worth of rhythm. Um, I hope this has been interesting. Thank you so much for watching and for um, playing along with me. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what you want to see and what you want to hear in the future. I'm always happy to deliver if I have the time and I'm able to. Sometimes it takes me a while. Um, check the description box down below for any relevant links and for um, any ways that you want to support me uh, by buying a book or something like that. So have a great day and I'll see you guys next time.